For one to think that God does it must mean that God intervenes in nature in this way, one would be guilty of the cosmogonical fallacy. Now, if this distinction between the being of something and its operation is correct, then nature and her operations are autonomous in the sense that nature operates according to the way that she is, not because something outside of her is acting on her. God does not act on nature the way a human being might act on an artifact to change it. Rather, God causes natural beings to be in such a way that they work the way they do. Hippopotamuses give live birth because that is the sort of thing they are. Why are there such things as hippopotamuses? Well, nature produced them in some way. What way did nature produce them, and why does nature produce things in this way? It is because God made the whole of nature to operate in this way and produce by her own agency what she produces. Thus God remains completely responsible for the being and operation of everything, even though natural processes possess real agency according to the way they were created. Intelligent Designers and the Cosmogonical Fallacy In light of this sketch of the Thomistic account of creation and natural cause, one can perhaps understand the reluctance of contemporary Thomists to rush to the defense of intelligent designers. It would seem that the intelligent design theory is grounded on the cosmogonical fallacy. Many who oppose the standard Darwinian account of biological evolution identify creation with divine intervention into nature. This is why many are so concerned with the discontinuities in nature, such as discontinuities in the fossil record. They see in them evidence of divine action in the world on the grounds that such discontinuities could only be explained by direct divine action. This insistence that creation must mean that God has periodically produced new and distinct forms of life is to confuse the fact of creation with the manner or mode of the development of natural beings in the universe. This is the cosmogonical fallacy. Among the most sophisticated attempts of intelligent design theorists to counter Dar the Darwinian account of the formation of organisms is the irreducible complexity argument of biochemist chem Michael Behe. He argues that there are specific life forms and biotic subsystems which are irreducibly complex and which could not possibly be brought about by means of natural selection. Irreducibly complex systems and forms reveal intelligent design in nature and therefore indicate the reality of an intelligent designer of the universe. Intelligent design theorists are often perplexed and even put, a bit put off that Thomists do not acknowledge the cogency of Behe's argument. After all, Thomists are quite open to the notion that creation provides evidence for the existence of the Creator. Cosmological arguments for the existence of God based on the order of nature have, been a long, have long been the special preserve of Thomism. Why then have Thomists not been among Behe's most ardent supporters? First of all, they would agree with many biologists who have pointed out that Behe's claims of irreducible complexity fail to distinguish between the lack of a known natural explanation of the origin of a complex system and the judgment that such explanation is in principle impossible. Thomas, however, would go even further than mo most biologists by identifying the first claim as epistemological and the second as ontological. Now, a Thomist might agree with Behe's epistemological claim that no current or foreseeable future attempt at explanation for certain biological complexities is satisfactory, yet a Thomist will reject Behe's ontological claim that no such explanation can be given in terms of the operation of nature. This ontological cl claim depends on a God of the gaps understanding of divine agency, and such an understanding of God's action is cosmogonically fallacious. Conclusion. There is, of course, much more to be said on this topic. Let me be the first to admit that this presentation provides, at best, a sketchy account of the issues. For one thing, a complete treatment of the relationship of Thomism and intelligent design theory must take account of the variation of views on each side. Nonetheless, what has been presented here regarding the identification of the cosmogonical fallacy provides some insight into the reasons for fundamental disagreement between Thomists and intelligent design theorists. The careful distinction of Tom Aquinas, clarifying the Christian doctrine of creation ex nihilo, excludes certain ways of conceiving God's relation to the natural world. Thus, despite their shared cultural and religious concerns, those who do philosophy in the Thomistic tradition, and those who have devoted themselves to the intelligent design movement, find themselves on opposite sides of the crucial issue of the nature of divine agency.